Okay, welcome back everyone. So today we're going to be continuing our um, uh, little series of videos um, regarding infimum and supremum with uh, three important examples. So here's our first example, and it's going to be the following. So we have our set S1 equals a set um, of, the, it's kind of like a sequence essentially, it is a sequence. So it's going to be 1 over n minus 1 where n is a natural number. So, and as the sequence increases, um, well, it's pretty easy to see that it's decreasing. And maybe to see that, because that's actually important for our argument, first note that since n, uh, first note that we have that n plus 1 is greater than n, right? I think we can all agree with that statement. Then notice that, well, if we reciprocate both sides, we swap the inequality. So we have 1 over n plus 1 is less than 1 over n. But that just tells us that. So if and only if. Um, we just have, if we subtract both sides by 1, and I'm going to just swap the position of these. It doesn't really matter, but I'd like the look of that better. Oh, whoops, I, that was an accident. Minus 1. So in other words, as n increases, um, as n increases, our sequence decreases. So in other words, it's a decreasing sequence. And therefore, we just take the supremum to be the largest element in the sequence. Or, well, the first element, I should say. Uh, well, the supremum is the largest element in the sequence. So, well, the largest such element is simply going to be, well, we can just take n, b n to be 1, right? So, in other words, what we have is just, well, the soup of s1 is just going to be 1 over 1 minus 1 equals 0. And you can see that as you increase n, it's going to get, uh, the sequence is going to get, uh, or the sequence is going to get smaller and smaller. So this is our soup. Okay, so now the infimum is a bit more interesting. Um, so well, what do we get? Uh, so we're actually going to utilize something called the Archimedean property. And that states that uh, if we have like a and b uh, are integers, then we have that, or not integers, are rational numbers. Then we have that there exists an n in the integers such that, well, we just have a n. Um, we have uh, a n, or I'll write it like this. Uh, let's see, a n, like this. Or maybe n a, I guess. Okay. And um, maybe you can start off with the condition that b is greater than a. But, so there exists some a such that this is the case. That's, that's pretty much the Archimedean property. So we're going to utilize this to find the infimum of the set. Notice that we can't just trivially find it, but I, but uh, if you're familiar with the concept of a limit, you can tell that this approaches negative one but never hits it. So we can conjecture that the um, the infimum is negative one. And to show this, well, we want to show that that for all small epsilon greater than zero, we have that one, uh, or I should say epsilon minus 1, or um, to get better intuition, minus 1 plus epsilon is actually in S1. And to see that, well, if we say, let's say this is like our set S1, okay, so let's say this is our S1, this is 0, um, this should be infinite technically, but just to, as a visual, let's say this is our supremum, we conjecture that it's negative 1, but let's but uh, let's see. So, in other words, what this is telling us, that if we 
add a small epsilon to this, we are back in the set S1. Okay? Because notice that negative 1 is not in S1. So in other words, um, in other words, there actually, it, it suffices to show that there exists some, uh, there exists, let's say, some A, uh, how should I say this? There exists, yeah, there exists A in S1, such that A is greater, uh, greater than epsilon, uh, A is greater, or, no, A is less than negative 1 plus epsilon, okay? So it suffices to show that. Okay. Well, let's see. How do we uh, how do we do this? Um, well, how? Okay, so we're gonna, again we're going to use the Archimedean property, and by the Archimedean property, we know that there exists a k. There exists k. This time we can say it's in the natural numbers, and you'll see why in a second. Such that k times epsilon is actually uh, is less than uh, let's see no yes uh, yeah is uh, greater than okay that looks like n is greater than or equal to 1 right and the reason k is a natural number is because well epsilon is greater than or equal to zero. Well, normally, again, we would say that k is an integer, but in this case, clearly k can't be, zero, can't be zero, and if it was negative, this clearly wouldn't hold since epsilon is positive. Okay? So we have this, right? All right. Um, well, let's divide both sides by k. Notice that this is valid since k is a natural number. And notice that this happen. Notice that we can subtract one from both sides. Okay, now we have this. Well, notice that this is exactly what we wanted to show. Notice that this is clearly within S1. It's of the form of a number within S1. K is a natural number. And we've shown exactly this. Now, this greater than or equal to sign doesn't really matter. I even if it's equal, right, we still have that epsilon minus 1 is in um, is in S1 okay um, so in other words that just tells us that negative 1 is in fact the supremum or the infimum of uh, of the set S1 therefore I keep doing that therefore the infimum I'll just write it out of S1 is negative 1 all right and, well, I'll let you see if this has any maximum or minimum. Um, I'll give you a few seconds, but, yeah, this is often the easiest part once you find the supreme and infimum. Well, we, are, we already kind of answered that earlier, but notice that the supremum is, in fact, in S1. So the max is just going to be, uh, is, is just going to be zero, right? Uh, since it's since we have n equals one, um, which is zero, and that's in S one. And notice, that, recall that by definition, the maximum has to be in S one. It's the greatest element. But notice that the infimum is not in S one. And I, I mentioned this earlier too, but I guess to be more rigorous, we have that. Uh, let's by way of contradiction, let's suppose this can be the case. But that implies that. 0 equals 1 over n. But this is not possible, right? We would need that, uh, we would need that, uh, well, clearly, <laughs> this is not true for any n, and if you, or in other words, if you were to reciprocate both sides, you would get 1 over 0 equals n. Well, that's just not valid. Okay. Okay. And so therefore, the minimum does not exist. Well, that completes this example. 
And in the next video, we're going to take a look at the second example. And, then, and I and personally think that the second example, assuming it does, I don't change it, is actually going to be easier than this one, much easier. So I'll see you then.